back. In this session, we're going to talk about global navigation satellite system. A lot of people get confused as to what this GNSS system is and they think it's the same as GPS. Actually, it's not. If you look at this GPS receiver, it receives both GPS as well as GLONASS signals. GNSS stands for Global Navigation Satellite System, which uses various different positioning systems like GPS, GLONASS, and various others. There are various positioning systems like Navstar GPS, which is an American system. And you also have GLONASS, which is a Russian one. You have Indian one, which is Iron and SS. Then you have the Chinese Beidou system. And finally, you have the European Galileo system. The Navstar GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo are worldwide system. However, the Chinese and the Indian one are uh, very local uh, because their satellites um, work uh, only locally um, around their country. So they work on this uh, orbits which are uh, just on top of their country. They work on what is called geosynchronous uh, synchronous orbit and these two systems are not worldwide whereas the other are worldwide. We're going to talk about Navstar GPS in this uh, particular session and see how it works. Basically, the GPS system has a set of uh, satellites which orbit around the Earth. At any given time, you have minimum four satellites are visible at any point on Earth's surface. The configuration is such that you always get minimum four satellites uh, visible. Each of these satellites transmit what is called a nav message on frequency of L1 and L2 band. L1 uh, works on the frequency uh, of uh, 1.5752 gigahertz whereas L2 works on 1.22 gigahertz. Each nav message has information. It includes an accurate timestamp because these satellites have very accurate atomic clocks. They also send the satellite ephemeris or basically satellite's position. Using these two information, when the satellite beams this snap message, it also transmits the time it was sent from the satellite. Your GPS on board records what time it received this signal and basically finds the time difference for the signal to travel from the satellite to the user on board. Finding this time difference for uh, example, let's say 6.73 uh, into 10 to the power minus 5 seconds, it multiplies it by the speed of light and gets the range of the satellite. Once the GPS on board, GPS receiver on board your vessel has a range, basically it determines that it could be anywhere on that circle of the radius found. It uses another set of satellite uh, to do the same. And wherever these position circles intersect, that would be your position. In this picture, we have only shown you two, but actually the GPS receivers uh, use minimum of four satellite, more the better, and sometimes even more than four. This is how basically your GPS on board finds its position. The accuracy is typically from five to 10 meters, but uh, there could be a potential error of 10 to 15 uh, meters. There are various factors which affect the accuracy of the GPS. One of the errors are datum shift problem. GPS works on the basis of uh, WGS84. A lot of people ask me what is WGS84. Basically, it's the mathematical model of the Earth which GPS uses to uh, fix a position. Because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, it has various radius in various parts of the Earth's surface. Uh, WGS84 is that mathematical model. Now the same datum is used for uh, uh, printing charts, um, but the problem is there are various types of datum. You got Tokyo datum, European terrestrial referencing system. Um, the charts uh, should be on the same datum as what uh, GPS system you are using. So if you are using WGS84, you might see that some charts mention that you have to shift the position by a particular amount if you want to directly plot GPS position on those charts. So always when you're plotting GPS position on the chart, you would need to shift them. There is also the Inosphere error, 
basically ionosphere is a layer in the atmosphere where you have free electrons and what happens is when this satellite messages pass through the ionosphere they bend and you don't really get the true range of the satellite and that causes error. This error is less when the satellite is directly overhead of the user and this error is quite large when the satellite is near the horizon. Uh, the minimum elevation you need for the satellite is at, at least 5 to 10 degrees. That's called the masking angle and that can be set in the GPS units. Always check that minimum 10 degrees is set as a masking angle in your GPS unit. Otherwise you get large error because of this uh, problem. The atomic clocks can have errors. Uh, one nanosecond error in the atomic clock can relate to one feet error and that's why it's important that the clocks are monitored continuously. Then the theory of relativity kicks in. Basically, because of the velocity of these satellites, uh, the clock, the atomic clocks on these satellites slow down by a particular amount compared to a clock on the Earth's surface. This causes issues in determining the range uh, of the satellite. The atomic clocks and satellites slow down 7.214 microsecond per day. Then the general relativity kicks in. Basically, it says that if a clock is kept near massive object that tends to be slower. In this case, the clock on Earth is beside the massive object which is the Earth. Whereas the clocks on the satellite are far away from Earth and they don't slow down, they are faster. Combine these two errors, it gives a difference of 3864 microsecond, uh, 38.6 microsecond per day error which relates to 10 kilometer error if not monitored. These errors are constantly monitored by ground station and they update the atomic clocks on board the satellites. So ground station monitor these GPS clocks and slow down uh, its frequency to 10.2 MHz. You also need to understand about augmentation. Augmentation of GS, GNSS is basically improving the accuracy, reliability and availability uh, by putting external factors into the calculation process. This is done by various means, that is SPAS which is satellite based augmentation system, you've got ground based augmentation system and air based augmentation system. We're going to have a look at SPAS and GPAS in this session. The SPAS or satellite based augmentation system is available worldwide to use a satellite for augmentation. There are various countries which provide the service, we've got American one which is wide area augmentation system. You have SAXA, which is a trial basis. IGNOS is the European one. AFI is still on tri trial basis. You got SDCM, which is a Russian one. Gagan, which is the Indian one, and others. The satellite-based augmentation system has accurate uh, watchtowers, which have predetermined position, known very well, and when it receives the GPS uh, signal. Uh, basically, it compares the error which is received from the GPS and then transmits to a processing center which in turn sends it to a transmitting uh, station which in turn retunes the satellites. The corrected signals are then sent to end users like maritime users or aircraft users or land users. This is satellite based augmentation system which is available worldwide. You also have ground-based augmentation system which is mostly used in airports. It used to be called LAS which is local area augmentation system which has been replaced by GBAS. So basically you have these towers again which know accurate positions and they compare what is received from the GPS and then send it to a processing station which then transmitted uh, using VHF towers near the local airport. GBAS is a very local system. It has only a range of 25 miles, so it's not a worldwide system. Something similar to GBAS 
is used in the maritime environment what we call is differential GPS we have towers near the ports or harbors which receive GPS messages and compares with its own position and the error is calculated and then transmitted on frequency of 285 and 325 kilohertz to the maritime users so that they get accurate position again it's only coastal and uh, it's not available worldwide you also need to know about DOP or dilution unit precision let's imagine you have two position line which intersect that way and they have no error you would be in the intersection point of these lines and your DOP or dilution of precision is zero if these position line have errors then instead of being at the intersection point you will be anywhere in the square box and your precision has been diluted DOP always also depends on the angle of cut of uh, various position line if you look at this picture the first one uh, you have no errors but in the second one if the position line have errors you could be anywhere in that small little green box but because if you look at the third one because of the angle of cut that small green box changes to a larger green area so DOP also depends on the position of the satellite DOP is basically the ratio of output location by measured data and that's why smaller the DOP numbers better your position zero being the best infinity being the worst if the DOP goes more than five you your GPS automatically goes to DL mode so you need to watch out for that there are various types of DOP you got HDOP VDOP PDOP and TDOP the one which is more relevant to maritime user is the PDOP which is shown in the GPS script You also need to know about cross stack error. Uh, when you use your GPS to enter your waypoints, the GPS gives you a bearing and a distance to the next waypoint. It also gives you a cross stack error, which you can predetermine in the setting. It's important to stick between that bandwidth because you don't want to end up in the shallow patches. Also, um, if you're out of your cross stack error, then you would not give waypoint get waypoint alarms. You'd, basically skip the waypoint alarms and you will never know when to alter the course that's why it's very important to monitor the cross stack error. thanks for watching